Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're going to be checking out Convolver and my favorite control on Convolver, which is the stretch control. This alone makes this Convolution plugin one of the greatest Convolution plugins out there. Uh, the ability to do this so easily. So let me go ahead and we'll start off with an audio demo and then we'll get into the details. So let's just hear this loop for a little bit. Yeah, so that gives you an idea of some of the sounds that are possible here. So I wanted to keep the patch pretty pretty bare bones. So essentially, we've got an LFO here that's moving the sync control. And there's also a little bit of pulse width going on if you happen to choose the square wave. And this is creating just some extra textures. The bulk of the texture comes from the FM, which is being provided down here by this separate oscillator. So that's just, you know, doing phase modulation. And... That's the general texture. It goes through the convolver in a small EQ, hits the distortion, which really brightens it up like a lot. And then there's an OTT on the outside of it. So that's that's all just so you know, if you wanna try and recreate a patch similar to this, you could. it's pretty much a one page patch. You can see it all here. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna dial in a little bit on the convolver. So first you need to understand a bit what convolution is. And it's a math process, essentially. It's actually an integral. And you can think of it as signal multiplication. And I don't want to dive into the math because it's kind of just scary if you've, if you've never seen it before. If you've ever taken any engineering math, you'll, you'll see it right away. But essentially what it is, is you're sliding one signal over another and then you're taking that result. And, it, and this is really important because what it could do is it basically provides a way to filter signals but it also provides a way to capture systems so you know a microphone is a system a, a cabinet is a system it's an electrical system and when you put in a voltage it's going to respond to that voltage and that's why you know the guitar cabinet sounds like the guitar cabinet and a microphone uh sounds different than say another microphone you know uh a condenser microphone is going to sound different than a dynamic microphone. And so convolution uh, sort of takes advantage of this. So I'm going to ignore the whole spiel about being linear. There's this whole sidetrack. If you want to be technical and actually characterize the system, you want a linear, you want to approximate a linear system. And almost none of these systems are anywhere near linear. But uh, essentially what you could do is you could shoot in a delta, a spike of energy, and you can see what the system does with it. So you basically, you put in a one and this is a special signal because giant pulses of energy have a lot of frequency content in them. So you're, you're basically sending in a, a huge pulse of frequencies and the system, whatever it spits out, that's what it responds to. Then if you send in a specific frequency, you can determine, you know, how it's going to behave you know, given that input. So if you give it a certain input, you can predict the output if you have the impulse response. And we can get this impulse response by sending in a delta. And convolution is how we take advantage of that. So what you do is you take your input, you convolve it with, you know, your impulse response, and that spits out the output, essentially. So we've got a bunch of impulse responses here we open this up these are all impulse responses and they've actually got a crazy good selection uh, there's a huge variety here a lot of times there's way it's just all reverb and there are some you know uh convolution reverb so you, you get a you shoot a loud sound there's a couple other ways to do this but you shoot a loud sound into a room and you record its response to that you're getting the impulse response of the system where the system is the acoustics of the room and so you could simulate rooms really accurately with this but you can also do like microphones and you can see here we've got filters because you could create an impulse response you could artificially make one and for you know 
a system that doesn't exist. And then you can use that to alter the signal deliberately. And so you it's basically the cornerstone or one of them of filtering, filter technology. So we've got filters here. You've got, uh, I love the formant stuff. I'm just kind of addicted to it. And then you've got like bass cabinets, guitar cabinets and, and all these things. And you could go and record your own and, and bring them in. That's basically what's happening here. So these are essentially just recordings and that that is what's going on so when we choose a system you know it's going to behave differently right a guitar cabinet system if we choose one of these is going to be these are going to be much shorter impulse responses and the length is important because that's going to affect um essentially if you have a long impulse response the convolution will be longer there's a reason for this but for now that's like that's a good enough explanation so if we choose a, a cabinet impulse response which will be very short those are all cabinet impulse responses same with the microphones if you go into the microphone and go through some of these these are also very short so these tend to lend to tonal changes in a sound you can, you can change the tone and vary them up and of course you've got your filters these are also going to be extremely short if we in fact if we come in here and look at some of these more interesting ones like they just they look they have a specific a particular look about them yeah so very cool if we go over to formants so there glitch is full of just like super weird stuff if you're doing like ambient sound design you might check out glitch uh, you've got you know reverbs and all that we're going to dial into format here and i want to go over just one of the things in here that uh, is just way 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 cool they give you a stretch option which allows you to stretch and shrink the impulse response and this has a cool effect on the frequency spectrum so right now we're at a stretch of 123, so it's actually a little bit longer. If we make it, you know, 400. Now you can't automate this. It's actually a little angry because you can see it like recalculating, but it, it does it so smoothly and fast that you can essentially move it around. So if you want these effects, like if you really like what the stretch is doing, you could actually record the output. Maybe this will be modulatable someday, or maybe it is and, and I'm just an idiot, but I don't see any way to, to get to this yet. So, uh, you know, prayers for the future, but you can move this thing around and essentially dial into a specific spot. And then what I would do is once I have more of a track going, I would go ahead and record a couple of these movements because the the movement you get out of it is like, it's so nice. But just some of the sounds that come out of this thing are incredible. And I like, especially with the resonance, if you have the right sounds set up, So you can use it to dial in and get right to where you want, but like those transitions are amazing. And I thought they warranted a little video. If this is your introduction to convolution, uh, this is how you could sort of go about, you know, sort of deciding how do you pick an impulse response, right? So, you know, this this sound is not something I'm looking to put a reverb on. If I wanted to, we could come down here to spaces and choose like a reverb. This would be a real long reverb, but this convolver is hitting a distortion unit. So we'd probably, we'd have to do something like this. We'd have to move it over here. So it's after the distortion. I mean, that's cool. I mean, that's an idea there. Uh, but if we put it before, all that is going to come into the distortion. So it doesn't make as much sense uh, from the sound design perspective that we're doing right now. And so we might go over to the guitar cabinets, mess around with some shorter ones. Uh, which is pretty fun or over to the formants filters again another fun one and you could just you know sort of check those out and dial in your setting as as desired if you have any questions about this feel free to let me know if i left out something that you think should be said about it feel free to drop it down in the comments subscribe and have a blessed day